ADHD, it can be described as having a low functioning filter for incoming information. And imagine a bar, a popular bar. It's Saturday, it's summer. The band is playing and uh, it's full of happy people. There is only one problem, the bouncers. The bouncers, they're not working properly. They're just sitting in a corner playing poker or something like that, I don't know. So there, there is no one at the door checking the arrival, arriving guests, and there is no one to throw out the ones that are not supposed to be there anymore. So the barkeepers, they try to maintain a certain level on the service, uh, but af after a while it gets hard for the waitresses to get all the glasses back into the bar again, because of all the people, of course. So um, they swap from draft beer to selling bottled beer. Uh, but after a few hours, they, they run out of bottles, so just in desperation, they <laughs> gives up and started mixing free drinks, of course, straight into the mouths of the guests. And what a night, what a party. It isn't until the early morning hours that the party gradually terminates itself. To run a bar like this is okay for a short period of time, but after a while, it will suffer. Ordering of supplies isn't working properly. Maintenance is a bit uh, wobbly. Uh, the manager is definitely grumpy, and the rest of the staff, well, they're not quite happy either. To have a small malfunction, like in, like in the bouncer department, that will give a burden to the rest of the system. And this goes for people with ADHD, too. Having small malfunction in the brain causes the brain's uh, um, ability to process signals in some areas to be reduced, and this have a huge effect sometimes on a person's behavior. ADHD. According to the Norway Public Health Institute, somewhere between 3 and 5% of Norwegian kids are diagnosed with ADHD, and two-thirds of those are expected to still have the diagnosis when adult. That means uh, in this room today, we are approximately 500 people, I guess. In this room today, about uh, 16 of you have ADHD-ish. <laughs> but that number, if we'd been to the US, that number would have been higher. It would be maybe 26, maybe 30. It depends on where in the US you would have been. Like in the, in the western part of the United States, they have much lower ADHD rates than on the east coast. And if you're a kid living on the east coast, and living close to the poverty line, then you definitely, you are in, definitely in the danger zone or, of getting an ADHD diagnosis. But there is hope. Move to France. <laughs> yeah. Where the amount of kids diagnosed with and treated med medically for ADHD is less than 0.5%. There are mystical variations here. And there are even those who don't believe that ADHD exists. Me, I'm diagnosed with ADHD, and I work as a coach, amongst other things, of course. But um, as a coach, my job is not to medicate people or diagnose them. My job is simply to help people sort out their lives. Existence or not, ADHD can be characterized by three main features. And these are hyperactivity, inattention, and impulsivity. And these are great character traits to have as a pupil, as a student, employee, as a partner, president. <laughs> I'm not judging anyone. <clears throat> hi, I'm, uh, hi, I'm struggling with the hyperactivity, inattention, and a low impulse control. Will you be my girlfriend? <laughs> Will you hire me? Vote for me? Maybe not? Well, hyperactivity, it's a physical thing. It's about being restless and a bit fidget also on the inside. And inattention, that is the opposite of paying attention. Like having difficulties paying attention at school, getting easily distracted, uh, having problems to uh, follow organized tasks and uh, activities. 
Like, yo, Jung, Thomas, did you not get the message? Well, sir, actually, I got the message. I just didn't know exactly what to do with it because I didn't pay attention in the first place. But, and, and then we have the impulsivity. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there, and a little bit of having difficulties waiting in line, waiting for my turn. Uh, on the other hand, it's very easy for us to interrupt and, dist and disturb other people. And it's very easy for us to finish other pe people's sentences. Ah, especially when we know what, were they, what, what they are supposed to say. <laughs> anyway, ADHD can appear as having low self-regulating skills. It can appear as a procrastinating, postpone mania and generally having problems with prioritizing and organizing. We get tired of things and we get easily bored and quite a few of us, we, we have this eager to more or less constantly try something new, something exciting, which leads us into things such as you know, high frequent serial monogamy and us regularly changing jobs, which again leads us to, uh, well, not keeping up to date with friends or colleagues regarding uh, career advances and increased income. And we can take me for an, uh, for an example. I'm only 44 years old, so I expect this list to grow in the future. I've done a few things in my life, and this is a few of them. <laughs> and there. <laughs> I, I, I was diagnosed as an adult, and I'm fine with that. I really am, because I met people, great people, that have been trained by parents and other role models. They have been trained to use their diagnosis as an argument not to try. Be tra trained to use their uh, diagnosis as an um, excuse not to fail resulting in lack of important learning. So you shouldn't go there, you got ADHD, and you with your ADHD, you're saying, oh no, definitely not go, and no, and no, and no, and no, because you got ADHD, no. Well, I'm glad that I didn't know any better, and I'm definitely glad that my parents didn't know any better. So, where were we? Yes. Hyperactivity, inattention, and impulsivity. Vote for me, and you'll never go hungry again. <laughs> and <laughs> this is, uh, this, this a description of a person with ADHD, for instance, me. But it's not, it's not me. I mean, well, <laughs> according to some people, it's me, actually. But um, those are just psychiatrists and stuff. I just, well, anyway. Um, I mean, the point is, who really wants to be something like this? If anyone. Anyone? One, you wanted to be, okay, that's you. <laughs> I'll have to talk to you later. Um, <laughs> Hyperactivity, if we dive into this, what, what, does it, what does it mean? Hyperactivity, at least it entails having energy in some way. And if I, if I asked you, what sounds better, being hyper or having energy? I am willing to bet my diagnosis that most of you would choose having energy. And energy is a good thing to have. Inattention. I, <clears throat> I admit that sometimes it can be a bit hard to pay attention, especially if there is something more interesting to do. And um, there is often something more interesting things to do. But that kid, that seven-year-old kid, who until one year ago was running freely around in kindergarten, thinking that life is great, he's now in a totally different situation. He's in, in a situation where he's supposed to sit down and shut up for 45 minutes at a time. And when he or she is not paying attention, it's not necessarily because they don't have the ability to concentrate. It might as well be because they are 100% occupied with something completely different. That happens. Hyperfocus, the ability to maintain focus on one assignment and that assignment only. A lot of people with ADHD have that ability, Ad adults too. And that is a unique trait to have. Impulsivity. A little bit here, a little bit there. Can it be positive? Yes, of course it can. And I just get straight to the point and say it. But it's, 
it can be posi pos positive because it's not impulsivity. I choose to call it flexibility because that's what it is. And I'm not trying to swipe the dirt under the rug here and pretend that everything is clean because after all, dirt is dirt where, whatever, wherever they, it is. But I do mean that we will get more of what we choose to give attention to. And by focusing on our potentials, we will achieve good and lasting life quality. When I work with people, ADHD or not, it's a precondition for me to work with people's view of themselves. Energy, focus, and flexibility, those are words less limiting, more positive, and with a great potential. And these words, they're definitely not symptoms. These words, they are skills. Important skills of an and being an important part of our identity. Having the energy to do what we believe in, to do more of what we enjoy, because that will create more of the right kind of energy, which again increases our, ch our chances of being satisfied. So that we, one day, or maybe every day, can look in the mirror and say, I am a human resource. A high ability to focus and to keep focusing on work, on family, and to our personal important goals in life. Having the flexibility to solve problems in a creative way. To move gallantly between obstacles that come in our way because they will come. For me, well, for me, it's pretty simple. It boils down to one thing, defining oneself, defining ourselves. And why on earth should we not define ourselves in the best possible way? This too is ADHD. This is my ADHD. And for those of you out there, especially those 16 or was it 19 in this room, having ADHD, please do remember that these are our golden benefits. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you. <laughs>